Hello everyone, and welcome to episode 90 of Bardic Quest. In this week's episode, our heroes embark on the next chapter of their adventure as they make their way to the lost mine of Fandelva in the hopes of seeking the Forge of Spells. But, en route, they sit around a campfire and enjoy a well-earned meal, whilst Johan confides in his compatriots. So without further ado, let's get into this week's episode of Bardic Quest. So you all um, essentially converge on camp at around the same time. Uh, Gundren has uh, been propping up tents and things. Um, and you see Saga return with a wild boar over her shoulders. Very good. Here we go. And then she kind of throws it in front. Well done. Looks it over and goes... A clean kill. No, uh, Gundren you. goes, impressive. Says, uh, I suppose we're going to need to get a fire going then. Hi. I'll uh, start uh, chunking this up and cooking if you'll allow. And um, yeah, I'll start butchering and uh, getting to getting to grips, cleaning the cleaning the animal. Um. Do you want use of the hide, um, Saga? No. It's okay. Fair enough. Um, so I skin it and, you know, start cleaning, cleaning the beast and start portioning it up. Um, thinking of recipes that he can do with some wild boar and some garlic and maybe some hard tack. And he's like, oh, I've got a bit of salt on me left. Yeah, I could do, yeah, I could do that. Okay, so as you're preparing the meal, uh, Gundren gets a fire started as uh, night descends upon your camp with the dim light of the full moon hitting the hillside and the, the campsite that you're in as you settle down for some nice roasted pork to fill those bellies is there anything anybody would like to do <laughs> anyone thinking <laughs> I, think, I think just sort of planning um just saying to the others so if this mine has been abandoned for years and there's potentially a shadowy, potentially magical black spider figure there. You said the doppelganger said something about not knowing how many they were as well. Yes, well, we don't know how, what bits were lies. Right. Purely for intimidation. I believe it would be unwise to underestimate the black spider's capabilities. There could be many down there. Hmm. So. That's true, but it, we shouldn't be scared of what's down there. No, yes, I am somewhat wary. Yeah, my dream haunts me. Well, you think we're? <laughs> I guess we could be walking into a trap of some sort. It depends if they know we're here or not. If they know we're here, then it's almost certainly a trap. 
But why not attack us now? Good question. They shouldn't know. Unless this doppelganger thing sent a message ahead. We intercepted them before they could take the map. It would have been in their possession for long enough that they might have been able to locate the mine before us when Gundrum was kept at Cragmore Castle. But hopefully, given that we've not left it too long, they should be ill-prepared. Uh, don't suppose there's anyone we can ask for reinforcements? <laughs> we need none. Well, we could at least hope for another cake delivery. Sort of looks around. <laughs> <laughs> <Expectantly>. Cake delivery? <laughs> Who no? do you think sent you that cake, for it? Any, any ideas? Any I thoughts? have no idea. It's someone that knows my name, my full name. Um, my initial instinct was my dad. He's uh, somewhat of where I get my culinary leanings from. He's uh, a gr he's he's great, actually. You think my food's all right? I mean, his is, his is next level. The man makes a fine cake brews his own ales. He's he's very much a, a homely sort of chap. Very warm to be around. And I'd, one of the I'd like to try try it sometime. I well maybe if you're up my way you can. But it troubles me because he was the, my first thought because so few people knew I was coming this way to Neverwinter, I wouldn't have thought that anyone beyond our own company and our uh, unfortunate enemies and grateful allies from Fandolin knew where we were. But I do know that there's a Feanor somewhere that's still veiled to me. I don't understand what's going so, on. So, and so could this be the other Feanor? Maybe. Or someone in your family? I mean, I haven't got any siblings, so... That surprises me. Kind of point of contention. Ah. <laughs> not, for, not for me. Uh, you know, unbroken line of daughters than me. You know, it's... Uh, I never had any siblings either. No. No. Just me and my parents. What were they like? It's it's been a while since I thought about them, but I don't mean to pry. So. It's 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 it's, it's fine. Yeah, they were they were great. I my dad was a Hannah. That was my last name. Hannah. And we had a few animals. We'd sell goods to people passing through town. I really like the horses we have. That's about. That's about all I remember. I never even couldn't even lift a sword. Wasn't strong enough. So I, yeah, guess I've changed a lot. Mm. Sounds nice. How about you, Johan? Any brothers and sisters? 
I had two older sisters and an older brother. We were very close when I was a child. My sisters were a lot like my mother. After my father was um, was taken into the service of the army of our Lord when I was very young. So my sisters and my mother ran the farm. And uh, my brother and I would play in the fields. My brother was always wanted to play at fighting, but I never did. I used to like games that would require imagination rather than brute strength because I uh, I didn't like fighting. But, uh, my mother took me to the order when I was nine and I haven't seen any of it since. You never saw them again after? Where are they? When my mother first took me to the order, I tried to run away. They always found me, brought me back before I could get very far. And eventually I stopped trying. But I always thought I'd go and find them when I could. And then when we were given our rights of initiation, I was, I don't know, 15, 16. I went back to my farm and it was gone. It was gone. Yes, like it, it had been burnt, but there were no bodies. Whatever happened, happened some time ago. And I don't know if they're alive or dead. I never went back there. Was the order strict? Yes and no. With their tutelage, yes, but they did protect me. And we looked after each other. There was... Well, I didn't have many friends because I didn't really want to be there. There was myself and Astriana and a boy called Valian. We grew up together. <laughs> it would always be Valian who would help me with my fighting skills and and Astriana would help me with my studies. They are both fine warriors. But I haven't seen Valian in a long time either. I believe he went east to help establish the order there. You've not heard of him? Heard from him? We tend not to contact each other. It is quite rare. We tend to operate alone. Well, and Astriana doesn't seem to follow that part of the rules, does she? <laughs> when I saw her the first time, I haven't seen her in years. It is quite strange that we keep bumping into each other. It's not strange, young man. Perhaps not. Well, I hope you find them. I am sure they are well. They can look after themselves. Your family, I mean, as well. So did I. I'll take the first watch.
Johan. Sorry, do you have a preference of which watch? Oh, sorry. No, no, no. I'll take the middle watch. Um, with your permission, um, I might stay close to you and see if I can uh, make any more progress while you sleep. Your hand's a little creeped out at first, but then the sense is a good intention <laughs> by... Uh... Noticing that, Thoric kind of shifts, is like, I can... I can monitor if there's any disturbance in your sleep. In which case I might be able to interrupt whatever it is trying to affect you. Very well. Thank you. And, uh, pull some, uh, another one for the cookbook. Some... We have uh, today uh, boar seven ways. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, some roast boar uh, with a wild green salad uh, is uh, on the menu today, and he uh, he makes sure to give um, Saga uh, the fillet and uh, some Aww. of the slightly tastier, slower cooked. Uh, haunches that are um, just so she's got like the nice lean parts and also some nice flavorful uh, fatty cuts as well and gives her the lion's share of that it says uh, to the to the hunter goes the spoils <laughs> thank you I hope you're enjoying this week's episode of Bardic Quest. I just wanted to take a quick moment to highlight our Adventurers Guild to you. Now, I understand more than you might realise just how difficult it can be to arrange a game of Dungeons & Dragons, particularly if you don't have friends who are into D&D, or indeed if you don't have a friendly local game store that is, well, local. So, I am offering my services as a Dungeon Master to members of the public. To find out more details, head on over to bardicquest.com forward slash play, where you can see all of the pay-to-play games that I'm currently running, powered in part by our friends over at startplaying.games, and ran over Discord, so you can enjoy these games of D&D in the comfort of your own home. Again, bardicquest.com forward slash play lists all of the adventures that we're currently going through, including The Lost Minds of Fandelba, which we're currently running through as part of the show. Um, but we're also running a few other games at the moment, including the Tyranny of Dragons campaign. But there'll be other games on there as well, no doubt changing as time goes on through the time travel magic that is the internet. Uh, so head on over to bardicquest.com forward slash play to see what games are available, book yourself in, and we'll see you round the table. So, you settle down, enjoy the wonderful meal provided by both Saga and Thoric, and then presumably settle down for the night's watch. Johan, yep. you are up first. Could I get a constitution saving throw from you, please? Nine. You manage to stay awake throughout your watch. Uh, is there anything you'd like to do upon your watch? Uh, I take out my, for the first time in a while, I take out my war pick and unleash it from my back and start honing the point to a sharper edge whilst on my watch and I yeah, take it and I try and in between like scanning the skyline and the, the tree line and the not tree line the, the hill line do a few practice swings maybe get a few in a bit better form I'm not used to because it's quite a cumbersome weapon I'm not quite used to it but yeah. I need to get a bit more of a deft hand with it mm-hmm but uh, I'm feeling a little tired because obviously I'm not quite myself. Uh, so once I feel like I might like uh, pull myself a little bit and just be like, oh, and then like put it back on my back mm -hmm. and then sit down, maybe take a few notes in the old book for uh, 
looking at the two of them lying there, giving myself a little smile, allowing myself a little smile as I, I guard them while they sleep. You'll be delighted to hear that your watch passes without incident. Oh, that's always nice to hear. Which leads to Thoric's watch. Aye. Johan, you awaken Thoric from his slumber. It is time, Thoric. Thank you. Sleep well. Thank you. I shall make sure of it. First of all, Thoric, could I get a constitution saving throw from you, please? Of course you may. That is a 19. Lovely. It's like you've been on the caffeine. Um, as you are <laughs> wide awake throughout your watch, is there anything you would like to do during your watch? Oh, yes. I would like to, through my entire watch, be continually ritual casting detect magic and detect poison and disease um, <laughs> okay probably more detect magic in fact uh, and cool. at three intervals during the night mm -hmm. so uh, I, one of either two things if I notice nothing about any change to Johan at three yeah. even intervals I would like to t uh, touch him and cast protection from evil and good okay but i'm going to be looking specifically if there's any change any shift so while i'm ritual casting tech magic that will hopefully give me a field of if anything changes or any magical presence suddenly arises mm -hmm. um and if i notice that he's having a nightmare or anything like that i will immediately cast protection from evil and good okay that. so to start with essentially it is detect magic to begin with yeah, that's kind of a continuous thing, because I can just sure. continue to do that as a ritual. As a ritual, yeah. Okay. Um, so you put your ritual together and you cast Detect Magic um, over the camp as you're looking out for any signs of anything that might uh, raise your suspicion. And aside from any magical items that you're all carrying that you are aware of, um, you get no sense of any magical effects in the area and uh, certainly, um, as this is a periodical thing, certainly nothing that signals any change in Johan. I don't notice him have any dreams or nightmares no. or no change in him as I'm watching him. No. Uh, in which case I will just cast protection from evil and good on him three times throughout my watch. Okay. Would you like to describe this ritual? Uh, so protection from evil and good, um, this is the one that would protect him from uh, any uh, sinister, or well, non-sinister creatures as well. Um, aberration, celestials, elementals, fey fiends, and undead. Say that after a few drinks. Um, <laughs> And it would hopefully safeguard him against any presence if it tried to interact with him again. He doesn't really understand what could have affected Johan, seeing as he was lying beside Saga the entire time um, without her noticing or him noticing anything. But he wants to get to the bottom of it, and anything he can do to protect Johan is worth doing. So, again, it's... um. It's this, uh, he's casting the spell several times and as he does, it's almost just like a twist of the hand and this um, silver uh, kind of force field kind of just rests over Johan. Uh, it's subtle, but it kind of gives a very dim glow uh, and it starts to kind of, the embers of the fire and any sort of falling wisp of duster uh, plant life or, you know, rain almost doesn't touch Johan. It kind of passes past him as if there's something protecting him. Okay. Anything else you'd like to do? No, he's kind of giving all of his time to, to that, obviously keeping 
an actual mm. watch as well. But sure. Um, sure. But apart from that, yeah, his focus is on Johan, and uh, he also he takes his um his healer's kit and divides them into uh, three uh, because he doesn't need them anymore, um, and he feels kind of sad about that. His he's always been he never wants to lose the practical side of how he helps people, but. Um, he figured that his uh, friends could probably use uh, the non-magical um, help, so he's uh, divided them up to give to his friends in the morning. Okay. You'll be delighted to know that your watch passes without issue. Thank you. Which leads us to Thoric. Uh, sorry, Saga's watch. Um, I'll go and uh, very gently sort of touch uh, Saga's arm. Anything happen? No. Quiet. And uh, Johan's sleeping well. Good. Um, Sleep well. Thank you. I will. There we go. Saga, could I get a constitution saving throw from you, please? Uh, Nine. Nineteen. Nineteen. You also are wide awake <laughs> during uh, your watch. Um, is there anything you'd like to do on your watch? I think she just does a lot of thinking but she doesn't mm -hmm. do much apart from just look at the surroundings okay could i get an oh, no. insight check from you please a what now an insight check from you please Bloody hell. i don't like this It's a uh, nat 20, but I get a minus one. Okay. As you are looking out into the night, mm -hmm. again, there's dim light from the full moon, so you can see beyond mm -hmm. the uh, your usual limitations of the night. You're just watching, and you get an unusual feeling of discomfort as the hairs on the back of your neck stand on end. So that's it for another exciting episode of Bardic Quest. We hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. Before we go, I just wanted to take a quick moment to say thank you to a couple of folks. First of all, I'd like to say thank you to James Webster for providing us with and allowing us to use this beautiful animated artwork that features throughout the show. If you are a fan of his work and want to show your support to him, then head on over to patreon.com forward slash jamesrpgart where you can become a patron of his. But also I'd like to say a big thank you to our friends over at Sirenscape for allowing us to use their wonderful ambience, music and sound effects. So if you'd like to introduce those sounds to your table, head on over to sirenscape.com to check out their amazing work. So that's it from us this week and we will catch you next time.